Hello there guys and gals, the Welsh Hunter here back with yet another 100% achievement guide and this time we are getting it all in Beacon Pines. A great little adventure game developed by Hiding Spot Games, published by fellow traveller and it's usually available for £16.74 slash $17.99 dues but it's free from day one on Xbox Game Pass so Game Pass your life up right now. So how to explain this game other than it's kind of like a furry Stranger Things. Uh, little Luca has to go on an adventure with best bud Rolo and new friend Beck as they uncover a huge mystery wrapped within a mystery. It goes from cutesy to god damn I didn't expect that. Which makes this all the more fun. Now achievements are very easy, there are a few that are story -like. there's only 10 in the game. Uh, we need to open a, uh, a fridge in chapter 1 for an achievement in chapter 3. We need to find 8 specific what are called charms in this game in order to fish them out of the lake later on. This is probably the quote unquote hardest achievement in the game although it is not that difficult at all but all in all because there is a ton of dialogue we will just be skipping through in this game it'll take you around two and a half hours to complete but if you're chilling and going along slow with the game it may take you around three and a half to four hours either way with all that being said then let us begin so the main important thing like I said as we begin with the A button straight away we will be going through each chapter a lot and I mean a lot of dialogue is in this game, so obviously I'm not going to be speaking through the dialogue. Um, but the one big game mechanic in this game of mechanics, without the mechanics, is the um, branching tree options. So when we pick up... Uh, hello. Oh, I need a controller for this game. <laughs> Why didn't you say so? So as we begin here, we're going to look at the graveyard. So press the A button. Again, it's, all very, it's very simplistic controls. And we're going to start speaking to our best bud. Um, but yes, so what is called, um, the, the main game mechanic is, it's called, it's basically tree branches. So when we pick up these specific charms, what we can do, we can press the Y button to go into a different point in the game, a different main point, whatever that may be, and then we can use a different charm in order to progress the story. So it may sound a little bit confusing now, but honestly you'll know exactly what's going on um, when we get there. Obviously it'll explain, it'll, I'll explain more in a lot more detail when we get there. So, uh, see you next time, Dad. You're, um, I assume you're not going anywhere because you're sort of stuck, but there we go. So, head down, have a little uh, blast through the dandelions right here, and this is where we're going to pick up the first out of eight charms for, specifically, for the Agile Angler achievement. Now, there are a lot more charms that we need to pick um, in order to progress the story, but there are only eight that we need to grab as we press the B button here. You can see which charms that you've got. There are only eight specific ones for the Agile Angler achievement, but of course I will uh, let you know when we're coming up to one. So, as we... Obviously it's going to get a lot darker than this. Um, this is our house. The map and the game world is very, very small. It, it'll You'll get used to it completely easily. So, slap it out. And again, it's going to be, of, of course, the A button to keep slapping, slapping, slamming it out. And if you want to see your main quest as well, you can press the B button once again here on the backpack and it'll say um, whatever it is. So we're going to head straight through the house. And again, <laughs> this um, she's got a lovely voice, absolutely lovely voice, perfect for the narrating. But, uh, you know, sometimes you just want to get on with it. But up, up the stairs we go, straight into, our, in, straight into the mid, sort of middle door right there. And that is where we're going to get the hide charm. That is just specific for dialogue later on. Go down. And you're going to go into our bedroom, interact with the chest of drawers, or the chest just underneath our bed. And we're going to get the chill. Oh my, chill. Charm. So heading back out, we're going to head back down the stairs. And then what we're going to do is interact with the sit the chair in the sort of living room, sitting room area, whatever that is. This is going to get us the next charm called Ponder. I ponder about the fire that I sit on this day. Ouch, my bum hurts. That's why you don't sit on a fire. Anyway, head through the kitchen, sort of at the back of the house there. And what we're going to do then, we're going to turn on the tap and we're going to open the fridge. You only have to do one of those things for the Born in a Barn achievement later on. But you might as well do both just for the lols. Have a look in the drawer then and that will get us the junk um, charm. This is number two for Agile Angler. So again, make sure to look in the drawer and then head outside. And this is where the story, this is where the game's going to 
Explain. Sorry, I completely forgot. I forgot what word I was going for there. But head to our gran. Oh, grannish is quite kind of young to be a gran. She must be from the north of England or something. Those 30-year-old grandmas. Uh, I'm just joking. Hope I didn't offend everyone there in the north of England. But now it's going to explain to us anyway what it is. So when we come back, uh, you can choose any option, by the way. Um, it doesn't matter what you choose. You can, we can just choose chill. So every time that we've uh, reached a quote-unquote end, or you seem to have hit a dead end, what you can do is press the Y button, like I said, go into one of the main points in the game, and then you can, obviously, the more charms that we collect and pick up, it's called a turning point, by the way, um, so the more charms that we do pick up, then we can go to that same point, so press the Y button now and it'll tell us what to do. Again, doesn't matter what uh, which one you choose, and obviously then you can choose a different charm, and then it progresses the story that way. So, it, again, it may seem a little bit confusing first, but it's it's honestly not too bad. And of course, I'm going to be telling you which ones to choose and stuff anyway. So even if you really don't get it or you don't care to get it, just follow along and we're all good. So, I just chilled again. The best lies are built on truth. Well, don't we know it. I'm handsome. Not a lie. Uh, right, anyway, when we're done with talking to Gran, well, she, we're going to try and exit. I'm going to try. And when someone usually says, don't get into trouble, that's the first thing we're actually going to do, is get into trouble. So, head outside, straight outside here, going down. And we're going to go down again into the next area. And we're going to speak to Big Rolls right here. And, in fact, we're actually going to start following him. So, follow him to the right. Welcome to Beacon's Pound. See, it's a lovely little place. And this is actually going to start Chapter 2. As soon as he bags off. Chapter 2. Welcome to Beacon Pound. For many years, it wasn't until over the next until in the six years. Ooh, lovely bad. Right, so now we're into Chapter 2. Head up where Rolo was. This is where we're going to get the Agile, Ang Agile Angler achievement later on. So don't worry about this for now. We'll come back to this quite a bit later on. So head up again until we get to the treehouse. We'll be coming here quite a few times. So heading towards the treehouse, go past Rolo and outside, and then have a look at the tree here. And this will get us the third Agile Angler uh, charm, which is Pull. So there we go. We got that one. So we've got three out of eight already. So what we're going to do then, we are going to head back in, and we are going to speak to Roll Olympics. The Roll Olympics. Eh. When we can finally regain control of little Luca, we're going to head back down. We're going to go down. So it's a great little place, this. Uh, head to the left and into the main area here. Go right over the bridge. Not through the water, because apparently you're too scared. And then right again past the perennial harvest. You can speed up people if you want, but we're not going to bother. So head all the way down, past the waterfall and down. We're going to head to the left, past Gecko Head right here. And we're going to interact with this melon. And what you're going to do is punch that. That's going to get us the fourth Agile Angler. Uh, or give it a smack. I think you've got to smack it about 20 times, actually. So give it a knock. Give it a give a headbutt, because you're super hard that you're beating up a watermelon right now. But that'll get you smack, which is the fourth out of eighth charm for the Agile Angler achievement. And it'll get us the melon, um, melon kicker achievement as well, or whatever it is. So head up and then to the right. Uh, play that funky music, sorry, that was the achievement. <laughs> Got my wires crossed up there. So we're going to speak, this is Rolo's sister, um, Toothbag. I, I forgot her name, actually. As Roxy took a Luca knew he had one chance. 
the past, he found the best way to deal with an enraged Roxy was to be a little chill. Holden Wilder ran the local paper of record, the Beacon. So you can see how there's quite a bit of dialogue in this game already. So this is what's going to happen anyway. There's no way you can avoid this. But speaking to Mr. Uh, old Dude will get us the change charm. So that'll come in handy later on. Before heading all the way to the right, interact with the statue. It's going to get us another charm. This time it is the uh, indulgent charm. I almost said the wrong one there again. But make sure to interact with the statue to get that before heading down. You're going to speak to S uh, Salmon Poisoning. Solomon Poisoning, uh, he's off, so don't worry about that. You can speak to Mr. Uh, Nut Greed. So, sorry, uh, Nun Greed. In fact, no, do speak to Mr. Nun Greed here. Um, because, again, we will need to speak to him for another charm, I believe, later on. So speak to Mr. Nutballs, Mr. Nun Greed's job done. And then keep heading past the telephone booth into the next area. Keep heading up. And we're going to see this small, hollow, ooh, spooky stuff. So you can try and go through the electrified fence if you want, but if everyone knows electrified fences, damn, that hurts. Um, so if you didn't have any hair before, touching an electric fence will give you hair. I'm just joking. Don't do it, bald people. Uh, so what you need to do, press A next to this uh, little mushroom patch right here, and you will just pick one up. And then obviously you need to throw it at each of the three bulbs. So the first one's on the left, of course, second one's in the middle. So just pick it up once with the A button. You will keep that in your hand. And then just go ahead and hit all of the light bulbs. And then we can climb it through. The fence's buzzing gave way to... Every kid in town knew the old valve long abandoned. The warehouse once served as now the dormant building. So jump around in ecstatic joy if you want. Yay, we made it somewhere. But all you've got to do then is just head towards the door and let this scene play out. And you can already see how spooky it is because it looks like someone's farting to death in that room. Green stink of life. Ah, you got the stink lines and all. The heavy steel door knocked to disoriented. They told you it was Stinkling, so we would have had the Scheisenhausen, uh, the Schnitt um, badge right there. Now we can just choose change because, of course, this is the only option that we can grab. And then what it's going to do is it then puts us back to what a, a little bit. Um, so this is technically one of the ends. So this is what I mean about the turning point. So every time that we've reached an end, obviously our narrator is going to say, bruh, <coughs> this, this ain't the way. This is not the way. So we're going to go and go to rendezvous with Roxy, so the middle flower. And then the charm that we need to pick. Again, and this is exactly what I mean. So the, we need to now choose Schnitt. The right, the one that rhymes with pit. <laughs> uh, oh, no, wait. Uh, so yeah, choose poop. And, um, and then that, what that's going to do is put us right back where we were speaking with Toothbag, Roxy's sister. Uh, Rolo's brother, sorry. <laughs> sorry, she is called Roxy. And then, of course, that uh, changes the outcome. And that is what we're going to be doing throughout the game. That is, like I said, the main game mechanic. So anytime we reach an end or anytime you think you may get stuck, just press the Y button, go back to one of those things, and we're going to speak to Mr. Nutball, Nutgreeds again. Don't think we needed to that time, actually. Uh, <laughs> before heading... In fact, we do. We need to get the shame. So we get the shame charm from that one. But again, that is the main game mechanic then. So anytime you feel stuck, press the white button, go on to a certain point, and then just choose a different charm so we can progress. progress. Ooh. 
So we're just doing the same thing as earlier then. All you need to do is pick up a mushroom because Rolo uh, apparently has an aim worse than most men in the middle of the night going to the toilet. So, <laughs> and that includes me. It's just every man. It's just what happens. So again, remember to pick up, uh, pr press the A button there, grab all three mushrooms, hit them all, and then it's another long scene, but it plays out a little bit differently this time, since we've got our friend with us this time. And it gets a little creepier already. So we're only 15 minutes in, but it's starting to get a little spookier already. Rolo felt around. He snapped off a tag from just within. Rolo held the badge up to a faint. Ah, it's an arm! They just chucked a dead body on us, broski! Uh, also, you would have noticed we got the rumble um, charm as well. So, uh, yeah. Throwing dead bodies on us already. Well, screw you. Luca sat in the dark. One, two, fifteen, six, thirty-five, thirty-six. Screw it, that's long. Luca care for nothing. No sign of Rollo. Time to haul out. Luca clamored from the dumpster. He was up like a shot and running. Beacon Pines flew by. He wouldn't remember getting throwing his front door open. So onwards to chapter three, my beloved little Saint Pies. And this is where the Born in the Barn achievement is going to unlock. So if, uh, if for some reason you didn't open up the fridge or turn on the tap in chapter one, you uh, press the white button and you should be able to go back to chapter one and just try it again, although you will have to replay it. Up until this point again, of course. I believe, unless you try coming back to this point with, uh, through the turning, turning through the trees and stuff. Then anyway, you should have got it anyway. So keep spamming through all the dialogue, and then she's going to be like, "Yeah, you son of a bitch, you opened up my freezer." There it is. The the, uh, the oh the ice box, of course. It's not uh, the freezer. Sounds like every mother ever. And every dad, isn't it? Like, what is this? Blackpool Illuminations? Leaving all my lights on? Meh. Anyway, that is where the Born in a Barn achievement be begins. And then we can go upstairs. And then what we're going to do is just start heading towards our bedroom. Which is, of course, straight down the sort of open doorway. When we get in here, just interact with the walkie-talkie in front of us. And it's going to start getting... Ah! So creepy. Also gives us the strange charm, but this is exactly how Barb from Stranger Things, the very first season, the very first episode, met her end. So we're going to head outside and, oh, it's Roxo. Oh, no. A pit formed. 
Luca's mouth felt dry. Luca could feel his heart. <clears throat> oh no, Rolos, where are you? In the shop, I assume. Rolos, lovely little chocolates there. So head down anyway. There's no need to go up ever at all as we get out of the house. Head to the right. Until we're back into this sort of festival area, we'll call it. Head over the bridge and then, of course, keep going right. And again, there's never a lot to do here. So we're just going to keep on going to the right. And a bit more dialogue. So we are going to get another charm for the Agile, the Agile Angler achievement here. So we pop up there, the top left. So keep heading down past the fountain and all the way down. And this is where, by the History Museum, this is where Yuki, Yuki Tsunoda, or Yis, Yisun, yeah, close enough. Anyway, after speaking to him, he only appears here the day after Ro Rolo goes missing. And that is how we can get the Kling charm. So remember, if he's not here before, press the Y button to go back into the tree and go back to the day that um, Rolo is missing. So anyway, up and then we're going to head right. Again, this is where Mr. Nutgreed, uh, dr his drugstore is. So we're going to go into the library here, just next to the drugstore, and we're going to speak to uh, Parrothead. Oh, Cardo, sorry. Avocado. No, I don't have a car, though. That's why I can't drive. If you were to ask, he'd escape into the dusty old bookshelves and... Kato was lost in Luca Crook. He gestured to the shell. There's only one way to find out. Fight! That is a British British TV burp humor at its best. If you don't know what I'm talking about there, that's uh, Harry Hill's TV burp. A lot of Americans will not get that at all. It was a TV show back in uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, Harry Hill, comedian. Yes, anyway. So what we're going to do here is just interact with all of the bookshelves. So there are six to interact with. So it'll be three on the sort of side that we're on now. And then there's three in the sort of top... Sort of, oh, it's a weird angle from here, but the sort of bottom left of the library corner. So it'll be three there. Uh, try not to walk into the chair as doing that uh, renders you pretty useless. So interact with these three bookshelves, and then there's one on the right of where we are, and that will get us the nerd achievement. Oh, the carbs! A salad. There were rarely simply. Now nah, we'll just make sure that it unlocks. There it goes. So perfect. So what we're going to do, we're going to head out and we're going to speak to our new friend, even though she doesn't know it yet, called Beck. Beck's family moved off, giving her little time. She would tell you she... Luca shifted him. Beck pulled a coin from... So, let us get back into this mess. She's only just moved here, so let us drag her into our crap, is it? So we're going to head up and up again, and back into this area, but we're going to keep heading up, sort of up to the left, and it gets us automatically into the green oozy area. So, speak to Beck again, and then we're going to get Iggy Pop and Big Trish appearing to make our life more of a living hell. Luca watched as Beck dipped a broke Beck's eyes widened, first small... As quickly as they had grown, the f Beck dropped the stick with a Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Iggy took a step towards Luca. Beck could see tears welling in Luca's eyes. So for the first time then, we're going to have an option of which charms to pick in order to progress the story. Which way are we going? Press the A button here and then we're going to choose Strange. So we're going to choose the Strange charm. We are going to flip. Luca is going to get his steroid infused arms out and be like, I saw a bitch leave my mom alone. And then push little Iggy into the green ooze. Delish. <laughs> At the sight of Iggy taunting Beck, Iggy smirk shifted to a look of shock as Luca. Iggy's clothes were drenched. Iggy's voice began to slur. And of course, what that does is gets rid of Iggy, and his his face becomes incredibly deformed. And it gets us the struggle charm as well. So speak to Beck when you regain control here. You need to speak to her in order to move on. Iggy's going to be okay. Bruh, did you see the hell on the side of his face in his hand? Eh, no, no, no. Rolo was sick. a wave of relief washed over. Gran is going. If he hurried, he might. Chapter F R Harvest. Luca took a deep breath and ginger. So then, on T Chapter Four. Right, let's go and find Gran bags. Go into the kitchen here. Going up. Gran? No, no. Gran is uh, Gran is in Pound Town right now with uh, Mr. Morris. Uh, heading outside and going back in anyway, and we're going to be like, hmm, I don't know. So we're going to head back down for now, and then what we're going to do is head up the stairs, and then we are going to just go into our bedroom, so head down into our room. The house was empty. I tell you what, there's nothing wrong with an empty house, especially if you've got lots of, uh, lots of internet, or if you had to do it back in my day, it was watching um, Christina Aguilera's dirty video. Yep, only men, really, only sort of men over 30 get get the struggle before the internet was a mega thing. Um, anyway, I'm just waffling on. Again. Welcome to my videos. <laughs> Scrambled back, Dad. Sorry, kiddo. The relentless... Dad, his father casually wound the reel. None of it's your fault. Dad, we have to... Luca grabbed his father's shoulder. Please, you... The ice crack. That's the thing about his chest began to crisp. You toss your hook in. A shock of searing cold. The chair tipped backward. Luca tried to stop them. He watched the... Dad, the gentle rustle of... Luca's eyes struggled to... Faintly, he could hear... Rolo's voice was coming through, but some words. <laughs> the signal went silent. Luca held still, his pounding heartbeat. Rolo's voice began to fade. With that, the signal. Luca grabbed the walkie-talkie and sprinted. So when we can finally regain control of our character, we are going to head outside. Here we are, already outside. We're going to head down once, and then <laughs> more weird stuff is going to be happening. Mr. Tolliver paused. Uh -huh. 
Mr. Tolliver took one long, quiet. <laughs> The three shared a det- So as you can tell as well, that gives us the refuse charm or the refuse, 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 yeah. So head to the right anyway, and then what we're going to do is head up, so past the sign, and then we're going to go up left again, and we're going to go straight into the treehouse, because we're getting all, it's getting all creepy, baby. So interact with the radio here as well, and that's going to get us another scene to smash out. Now this is definitely it. Upside down. We're gonna call it the, we might as well call it the inside out this time rather than the upside down. Luca could only he strained to hear. Fear gripped. Luca stared at the ground for a moment. The figure shifted slowly from. Ah! Jesus Christ, you scared me, a big tooth face. Iggy's tone jolted to. Luca slumped to the. Vicky slumped to his knee. Luca grabbed the walkie talkie and Luca and Iggy climbed up the back of the mission control to from behind the crowd. They must be Canadian, those enemies. They're the nicest set of enemies we've ever had. Uh, please don't kill us just yet. Just uh, g give me a second to confer with my buddy. Uh, yeah, of course, no problem. And then, then occurs, obviously, the uh, main douchebag. So for now, we've only got one charm to pick, which is fight. And as you can imagine, it's going to go as well as taking a dump with your pants on. Lucas summoned his most... with a nonchalant wave of the hand. As the clipboards began to slowly at the end. That's 
There we go, the end. All done. That's it. Game over. Give me it. No, what we're going to pick now is the top left option, which is going to be Warehouse. Uh, the Warehouse of Horrors. And this time we've got a new charm to pick, of course. We couldn't pick this one last time because we didn't have it. So pick the Warehouse of Horrors and then choose Struggle. And it's going to start getting intense-ish. Sorry about struggle. Luca could hear a machine humming somewhere. He felt around wildly. Sir, his hands found. A he yanked it free. Let me. Luca swung the tile. He heard the crack of with a muffled yelp. Luca was free. He never looked. Chapter three. Everything's fine. The next morning, it was only the sound of silverware. <laughs> So, as you can see, we've gone into the same chapter, but because we picked a different uh, dialogue option, we are now doing some other stuff. So, pick up the jam, head outside, speak to Rolo, the Maltese head. Man, Rolo is such a nerd, but I love it. I do love it. So we're going to head down. And then, of course, we're going to head right into the festival little area. So we're just doing some deliveries for free, which, uh, well, that sucks, especially in this climate. So head to the right. And then what we're going to do, we're going to head down. We're going to head all the way down past the fountain again. We're going to go to the watermelon once more. And this time, because we can't punch it, because we've got our hands full... We can kick it this time, and that is what is going to get us the Melon Kicker achievement. So that's the only way you can get that achievement, is if you've got your hands full of jam, job done. Then you can go ahead and speak to Mr. Tolliver here, right by the melon, to give him some of that sweet, sweet, sweet. He leaned in. Mr. Tolliver leaned back, speaking loud. He reached forward and snapped up the jars. He leaned in for... Bruh, you don't need to be that weird just for picking up a couple of jam jars, okay? Whisper into me, you douche. So head up, and we're going to go top right this time. So heading to the top right and into the cafe diner thing right here, and we're going to speak to Mrs. Fluffle, Mrs. Flubbler, Fratelli. Eh, close enough. So, stick your jam where the sun don't shine, right in the old Fratel bags. Luca shifted the... Mrs. Fratelli lifted the cloth. She carefully lifted out... That'll get us the break charm, and obviously, if you know what I mean by sticking the jam where the sun don't shine, right in her hands, because there's not a lot of sunshine in the diner. So heading out anyway, and we're going down and to the bottom right this time. So past the statue and into the uh, Nut Greed's drugstore area. Now this is where you need to be slathering your jam right on this walrus dog looking thing. Mr. Nut Greed. <laughs> Nut Greed snatched the bath. Right, so after Becca appears then, we're going to follow her. So from where Mr. Nutgreed is, we are just going to follow her left. And it is main area where we're going to have a chat with her parents, her mommy and mommy. Um, you're, One of them is called Nelly and one of them is called Chungus or something. I can't remember. But anyway, the two moms, you need to speak to them. Beck gave Luca a quick nudge. Oh, 
So we've got nothing else going on with our day, so let us go ahead and meet back at the big creepy gate. So it's bottom right that we're going towards, so past the statue again. Um, ignore, you don't have to speak to Big Jeff, the uh, wacko right there. We can go past Nut Greed store, past the phone box and up. This time we go into the right for the first time. Ooh, spooky stuff. And here is Beck. <sighs> So after you're done wondering what the uh, titty balls is going on right there, we're going to go to the right because a house is right here. So that's nice. Right on the end. It's a nice little house, but it's right on the end of the creepy witch mansion thing. So anyway, you know the drill by now. We're 40 minutes into the game. Spam through the dialogue or enjoy the story. Beck took a long breath. Chapter 4 Dinner with the Moodwill <coughs> Ilona Moodwill was worried about change, but there was a different- Almost done! Nelly- Dinner went by without much as she watched Beck and Luca finish up their pizza. The thing she cared about- Nelly finally- Beck was beginning to- Ilona's task was- She could do that. Luca's eyes were fixed to his plate, pushing a chunk. Nelly was the one who eventually. Ilona nervously just. Luca wiped his face. Beck gave Luca a swift kick on. glanced over to Beck. She Beck slammed her fist perhaps harder. Luca glanced out. The sky was darker than he. Luca wiped his mouth one last time. So after what uh, appeared to be quite the awkward encounter there over Dindins, we have two options to pick now. So two charms that we're going to pick. The one that we are going to pick is Rumble. So make sure to pick Rumble this time. Thunderstorm will happen. We will end up in Becky's room. Luca surveyed the room. At that moment... Of course, the row noise was because uh, Becky's a cat. Cats don't like getting wet, so that's more of a pissed off noise that was. So anyway, when we begin and we got control of Luca, interact with the flowers here. This is what's going to get us the next Agile Angler charm. It's pungent. Delishimo. But that is what is going to get you the next Agile Angler charm, so make sure to interact with the flowers. And again, you can only get this pungent charm when you've picked Rumble as the option. So if you somehow missed this one, again, press the white button. Come back to this point, and then we can choose that one. Otherwise, we can interact with the radio for more dialogue. Luca flicked at one of the top. Then go ahead and look at the microscope on the right-hand side of the room. Luca squinted into the eye hole of the microscope. Luca adjusted the slide with his... Luca wiped his hand. Beck looked down. Oh my god, she's gonna do superhero landing. Wait, wait, ready? Superhero landing! Except it seems like it hurt Beck more than it did on, uh, <laughs> on Deadpool. Watch the reveal at some... took a deep breath. Luca let 
get out of Her voice dropped to a tremble. Beck brushed off her shirt and straightened up. As abruptly as it began. Friendly few. The air was heavy with the smell of wet. Despite his dreary surroundings, he'd never shared the not even roll But it's not like this changed. Adding it back to the group would help balance. This is what Luca told So now we need to go and chat with Rolo. And boy, is this dude gonna be pierced. So head to the left, of course. Head to the left again. Yes, he's gonna say some rather nasty untoward things. Head down. And then, of course, we're just going to head to the opposite side. You know, like I said, th this area is so small and short. You do sort of remember where you're going when you know what to do. Um, but we are just going to keep heading to the t uh, top left. So top left, and that puts us back into the Harvesty festival -y area. Man, why do people like this, <laughs> this boss guy here exist? Dicky bow tie, okay, people can get away with that, but just a, oh, just a, oh yeah, I see, I see, I came from Harvard University, and I've got a wiener size, the size of 27 inches, yes. Well, why, why are people like, why are some people like that? Anyway, heading up over the bridge, heading up, heading up left again, and, well, the conversation is gonna get poisonally nasty. I had only ever heard him speak, and it always meant... Rollo scoffed. Luca stumbled on his words. Instinctively, both boys were now sh <laughs> Rolo's tone changed to a calm. hung and Rollo's stomach dropped, but it was too Bruh. You can't be saying stuff about people's deceased parents. That's just not cool. That That is just, that's a line you just never, never cross. Never, never cross that line because that makes you an absolute douche. So, uh, interact with the old stuff there and he brings out a football sort of just to the left of the room. So what we need to do is kick this football three times. Because of course that's what you get your anger out on. You don't you don't try and uh, just punch each other and then it's all done. You just kick a football three times. Ooh, I'm Rolo. Very very insulting there. Uh, go to sleep. Grand Coot gently. Luca just wanted, he waited to hear the- When we wake up then, we're gonna kick the ball another two times because apparently we haven't got quite all our anger out just yet. So we need to kick the ball another two times and then we're gonna fall asleep once again. Takes it out of us being pissed off and kicking a football. That's why footballers are on, you know, 200, 300 grand a week because it's so tiring to train and play 90 minutes a week. It's it's hard going, man. You know, you'd, you'd rather be an NHS... <laughs> wouldn't you rather be a nice NHS nurse or NHS doctor on absolute pennies while they struggle to work 18 hours a day? No! Yeah, that's uh, all that stuff I don't get. But still, we're not here to talk about that. We're going to kick the ball another two times, and you need to then kick it towards the shelf at the top. That'll get the book down. 
and then we can pick up the book. By the way, I know that between footballers, obviously, there's a lot more money involved in football. Uh, but still, the government should take the stick out of its own ass here and pay all the nurses and doctors, you know, and anyone who risks their lives a lot more. But uh, anyway, like I said, we're not getting into that. That is for a different podcast. I'll get pissed off about. Without realizing it, Luca had pouted. He once again felt the weight of it all. Luca stood and he looked up at his father standing but Walt was working a straw at the bottom of Dad. Taking a final loud gurgling, he jangled the straw playfully and lifted the empty glass as if the sore. Luca's eyes followed his in an instant. Across from him, the figure's voice, well, if it make yourself. Luca held his shivering hand. It doesn't. Their yellow gloved hand pointed. It's a cold. Luca peered at the base of it. It wasn't wood. Tiny buildings. Luca could see small people. Luca leapt to his feet. We've got to help. The figure gave a dismay. Why waste energy? The figure bent down to They only care about not like. Luca's voice was a trembling. Us? The figure slowly stood up with a jolt. And a cloud of torpid mist. Luca's own face looked older. The sensation was as if he'd caught a doppelganger smile. I tried to help once. He gestured towards his face. And all it got me, Luca staggered back. You? Luca felt a hand catch his shoulder. His father was there again. This every choice. This is the end. Luca watched his older self shake. Welp, dad. Luca watched in shock as the- In a flash of cold light. What does- Luca felt a reassuring squeak. Just remember. Why? Luca woke up. Uh-oh. -uh. Luca rubbed the kind, concerned face. <laughs> Grand silenced Luca with a j- Luca took a deep breath. To be fair, mind somebody um, tries to say anything about any of your deceased loved ones, you're going to be pretty pissed off for more than an afternoon, so... There we go. Anyway, so we uh, got a couple of charms there automatically as well. One of them was uh, sad, I think, and one of them was acceptance. Um, whoops. Pause the <laughs> pause the video when there was no need to. So anyway, we are going to begin chapter six here. We're going to begin it outside, and we are also going to go down. We are going to find Rolo and make amends. Roxy rolled her eyes. Luca looked down and uh, Right, okay, so we gotta follow the little dude's uh, riddle now. So head to the right. We're gonna head over the bridge to the right. Festival's looking good, starting to come together, right? Uh, so head to the right. And then we're going to go bottom right again. So that is the mayor there. You wouldn't you wouldn't think it because he looks kind of douchey. But then we're going to head into the library. And this is where we're actually going to get... In fact, if you interact with the window first, sorry. And then head into the library. This is where you're going to get the riddle me this. Achievement plus uh, do you have a cardo? We'll uh, have a little conversation with us. So, when we can, we're going to head up the stairs then, and we're going to interact with the left bookshelf. And that is going to get us the Adventures of Hank Atomic Issue number 5, which they keep talking about, but I've got no idea what's going on really with that. Uh, and then speak to Big Cardo once again. As he slid the, the Adventures of... Luca clicked his tongue... Kato began flipping through the page. He continued flipping. Reaching the end of the book, Kato... So, 
let's go to Griffin's Grub Cart or something or other. So heading out and going top left, we're heading out of this area and then we're going to go down south. Down, 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 bam, bam, beep, 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 And there is Griffin the Grub Gecko kind of thing. So you're going to speak to Broski Bros, Great Griffin the Gecko head right there. Luca shrugged, taking a size. Luca tongued at his cheeks. He reached into his mouth. He shook off the bits of corn dog to. Luca finished off the remainder of the corn. So, from here, we're going to head obviously back up. This time, we're going to go to the bottom left for the first time, sort of heading up the stairs as they were. So, head up. Now, ignore that. I accidentally went back down, so we're going to stay back up. And we're going to speak to um, Bill and Ted. Lumi waved his hands around. All right, odd. So there's the odd charm. And then there's Rolo with a bunch of balloons for us. That's pretty. So thank you for um, joking about my deceased dad. Still makes you a douche, but I will take your damn balloons. at Rollo, hugging. <laughs> well, I'll take your money, but I'm not, but I'm not shoveling your driveway. So we're going to head back to Rocco's balloon, Rollo's balloon. So obviously it's left. Top left, and then left again, and then up, sort of past the drinks cart and everything here, and then up again, and lovely, straight in the treehouse for more romancing with our bestest buddy. Rollo handed Lu Luca, if I am honest, but whatever happens, none of this is we both have. I wish there was a simpler way. God knows I've tried everything I've done. I hope someday you can accept love, Cran. Luca folded the paper into his pocket. <laughs> Was at, but that was fine. Sadly, my distant rumble shook. And climate protesters are going to love this because something incredible is going to happen and it's not in the good way. And then everyone who is protesting about the, the eco friendliness and the climate change and all that, they're going to go, See, I told you that it, that's going to happen to us. Screw you. And then a lot of people are going to be like, yeah, I agree. And then another bunch of people are going to be like, eh. And then everyone's just going to get on with their lives. That's pretty much life in a nutshell right now, isn't it? So anyway, that's the end. The big chill achievement will unlock. And we're, we did. Ah, but what we're going to do is head to MCDC, the top right hand corner flower now. And of course, it was an end, and we're not quite at the end just yet. So MCDC, and then we're going to choose Flight, the Flight option, which you should have automatically got there from Rolo with his apology with a bunch of balloons. He looked up with surprise. <laughs> Luca and Iggy win the branches cl after what felt like that was all the boys time. In fact, chapter f sign, they stood silent the sky with each breath. Let's keep moving. Luca pulled Iggy. <laughs> So 
So I don't know if this is like the alternate reality, the inside out as we head down. Uh, more obviously another scene. I you know, as more towards the sort of end of the game, that's what's going to happen a lot. We'll do like one or two, you know, go to one or two scenes and then a whole bunch of dialogue cutscenes will happen. To so interact here with the sign. Now, of course, it does, it should, if it doesn't look familiar, it should, because we've been here quite a few times, just not when there's been snow. So after this, um, on the left-hand side of the sign, there is going to be a bush that we can press the A button to pick up some snow, shove it at the sign. And they're going to be like, oh my god, we're in the inside out! At the sign. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the next part is going to be quite a while. We're going to head to the right. And then all we're going to be doing for the next couple of minutes is just spamming through dialogue. It's going to take a while. While old Toothy Pegs right there starts becoming less and less pissed off, which is always nice. Luca winced. Shut. The crunching of footsteps trailing Luca went. He looked back to see. <laughs> Luke appeared upward at the darkening sky. He let out a long, faintly. Seeing Iggy in such a pathetic state gave Luke a... Luke allowed himself to collapse. The boys huddled together, if not for exhaustion, their minds would be as it was, all they had. Pinky motioned sarcastically to his half default. Iggy shrugged. Iggy now wept. Okay. He wiped his nose with a sleeve. Luca gave a warm Iggy cleared his throat as he Iggy arched into a Luca's eyelids began That's all Luca could whisper before Iggy snuggled in The house smelled of warm bread Luca was playing with toy blocks. He looked up to see his his mother held his father. A voice behind Luca spoke. Luca turned to see his own. The doppelganger from his dreams. Aww. The figure picked up a toy. It's amazing the fist. Not that I blame. You don't remember. Luca snatched the. The doppelganger pointed to the cat. The last day we saw. The day he chose. Luca turned. That's not true. The doppelganger waved. Everything is true. Well, let me show you. The world flickered and Luca was sitting next to his bed. The doppelganger limp. He grabbed Luca's hand and Luca heard muffled. It was his parents. Do you remember what we- Luca gave a slow knock. He could see the- Damn it, Walt. We can't afford- She was scared. His father stepped- There's a sickness. I swore and I won't turn my back on- Luca's mother. Walt calmly- What's right is right. I could never live with myself. Eleanor raised her- Spare me your bullshit. What about our- Luca flinched. Walt turned with Luca. With tears in his eyes. Mom? Walt dropped to a knee. Nothing but the wind. <coughs> Luca placed the stethoscope. It sounded like you were. Walt gently removed the device. Listen to me, Luca. I have some. I'll be back in time. To Luca hugged his father tightly. Promise. Walt stood up and walked. I promise. With a wink and a grin. He. A figure approached soundlessly. It stood above them, slowly raising one hand above Iggy. 
from a deep slumber. Whether it was the calming presence or Iggy felt his clenched fist, Luca looked up, gradually remembering. The figure exhaled a cloud. <laughs> when it came to complete strangers, Iggy had. Iggy huffed with gratification. Nat began to turn away. Iggy turned sharply and began. Realizing he'd worn their patience, Luca and Iggy turned around. deep breath in. Nat exhaled slowly, then snapped. For a brief moment, Luca and Iggy let themselves believe until they opened their eyes cold and... his sympathy with a shrug. He'd given Luca an ache. As Luca sprinted across the snow, Rollo said he was Mr. Kerr, tried to cover it up with love. The clipboards were... It all seemed to... But right now, there was... Luca stopped. The tree was gone. He dropped to his knees. His numb hands hit... A dry whisper is... There was no reply. Iggy finally noticed the tears welling in Luca. Suddenly, they heard the cry. to scoop up a snowball. <laughs> Luca stuttered through heat. Icky gave Luca a solid... <laughs> Luca wiped his eyes with a sleeve. Iggy flashed a mist. Yeah, I told you that was kind of a long one there. So that was about five or six minutes of just pure dialogue of what's going on. So heading to the right now, 
for some more dialogue. He darted behind a large he emerged holding a shoebox. <laughs> Luca rolled his Iggy stifled it. And then after this little bit of dialogue, we are going to walk right by about you by about one a couple of hundred centimeters or something before we get another one! Hooray! And now we can actually start walking right into the next scene before we see the whole of life. But before we do that, interact with the sign, the crooked sign of the town hall. This is the next Agile Angler charm called Crooked. So make sure to interact there with that City Hall Crooked sign. That's what I was going for. Before interacting with the hole, this be the source. Source, bro. Where's the source at? forward, bracing. His grip was made for care. He could see Kerr further down. and his every muscle in Luca Luca felt his hand slipping a calm settled over Iggy's Iggy's voice was colder than the well this isn't going well is it as we get the hum charm as well automatically but we need to choose refuse Iggy's request so we're going to refuse Iggy's request and you know we'll try and save his big eyeball he tightened his grip and reached a wild delight crept that's a good luck Iggy begged Luca with his eye we it wasn't long before Mr. Curse a clipboard dutifully predicted ah that I'll put in a good word a swarm of heavy and and once again, then, that was kind of a depressing end. So we're not quite ending yet. So what we're going to do then, we're going to go to the top left-hand corner. It doesn't seem to tell you which one it is, but it's the top left corner flower. 
And then what we're going to choose is the opposite one, which we've already got. So this time we are going to pick break. So not rumble, but break, because we're going to start outside Beck's house again. The thunder's not going to happen, so we and Rolo don't argue. He doesn't talk about my dad, who's currently sort of underground. And, you know, everyone's happy this time. Thank God. Lucas stopped himself. Lucas saw Beck skulking by the gate. Beck grabbed the wrought iron bars and... was an excited <laughs> The mysterious figure retracted their mask. A chill ran down Lucas, his vision blur. Beck stifled a sharp wince, and Luca... Tussled her hair back under the. Gran gave Eris a curt nod. Bruh! What the hell's my Gran doing in the Smurgan Smurgan's house? Uh, which. Uh, no, I forgot. You know, the, the, what looks like the main bad guy, the mayor's house. Um, yeah, so now it's all starting to get a little. Stinky. Very stinky, actually. Who is my gran? Why isn't she just drinking whiskey, smoking a cigar, and just chilling in the slippers? Old people don't do mysteries. Anyway, once we've done this, we're going to head to Rolo's treehouse. Obviously, it's left. We're going down. Old people might do mysteries, but uh, not anything I've seen. The clipboard finished writing with a... <laughs> Mr. Nuncreed. He snatched the pad and scribbled. The clipboards looked then broken a lap. So don't worry, we don't have to speak to Mr. Nut Greed, uh, Mr. Greedy Nuts. We can just walk what's on straight past him and head up. And then when we get to the next part, of course, we're going to be going to the top left corner again. So you can just head, you can head past everyone. And then of course we're going over the bridge and then sort of up, more or less up and to the right. So after this little scene where everything's so beautiful, we're going to head up through to the treehouse and then Roller's going to be like, Hey, you Sarah, who the hell is this? Ew, a girl. Girls have cooties. Because apparently every 11 and 12 year old boy used to believe that every girl had cooties. So I wonder what the girls used to believe what boys had. If cooties was girls, what was boys? Just the ick, I assume. Still the same for most. <laughs> it's still the same for most men now these days, isn't it? We're all a bit ick, and all the women are kind of cootie-ish. So, uh, well, you never grow up out of it, do you? So, <laughs> just lumping everyone into the same brush. I'm just joking, of course. 
You know, me and jokes, they're not very good, but you still stick around, so I appreciate it. So, what we're going to do is a little mini throwing game right here. So, go to the pile of junk on the right, pick it up with the A button, and then you've got to get sort of in the same sort of line as... It, it won't hit it automatically. As you can see, I failed a mega twice already. So, you need to get it right in the middle. Sort of, you know, far away enough, but right in the middle. Uh, pick up the can again, get the one on the right-hand side. Kablamo! Oh, 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 man. I am one big hippie failure right now. Uh, without a hippie. And apparently without the failure as well. And the third one is a moving one, which actually kind of makes it just a little bit easier. So, there's those three done. Apparently that's Rolo's test. And... <laughs> just test, nothing else. And that's... well, we're good to go. Chapter 6 Secret Summer forged ahead. Luca walked home slowly, reaching home. So, on to chapter six again. It's a lot of chapter sixes. Uh, we're just going to head downstairs for yet another scene, but we're going to start investigating some more stuff now. Luca and Beck rolled their eye. Rollo flung. He coughed. That's it. Kids snapped to glance at each other. Before he could finish. The three crowded with the glass door their eyes, but... As Beck pulled on one, the entire... So after all that then, we managed to find it in the kitchen. So we're going to interact here with the uh, files, the draw files first. And again, this is the sort of point coming up to the sort of last hour and sort of five or last hour and ten minutes. It gets very, a lot more dialogue-y with a sort of lot less gameplay. So, but it does get a lot more interesting anyway. So, you know, so it balances out well. He stopped at a page. 
Rolo looked up with heightened surprise. Rolo's finger traced across the page. Rolo scanned through several more. Luca staring blankly. Rolo rustled the folder, trying to. Luca frantically shut. So after this bit of chat is done, we are then going to go slightly left and interact with the chalkboard on the wall or the whiteboard or the plasterboard or whatever board that is on the wall. And then more investigative journalism stuff. We're going to interact with the barrel. And of course, interacting with the barrel there got us the incendiary charm as well. So don't think that ever comes in handy. I don't think we actually are ever going to use that. And then finally, interact with the table once more. And it's going to start being all like, well, you know, spooky and stiff again. Rollo carefully traced the path. He jabbed down at the... <laughs> Luca looked Beck flicked off the light Overhead The kids look Then sudden Without realizing they A muffled male a final few footsteps reached the entrance. Oh, no, no. The three kids shuffled as he began to descend the stairs. Thump. 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 At the bottom step, Rolo shifted side. Luca gave him an intense ch It was Rolo was already. He screeched as he ch With all his weight from the dark corner. Luca scrambled, pressing his as Beck flicked. Chapter 7 The interrogate still unconscious. His hands were bound. The kids huddled in a one. So, we now need to, as we begin with Chapter 7, we need to make another decision. We need to know if we want to go hard in Mr. Tolliver, or we're going to chill out with him. We're going to go hard, so make sure to choose the hard option. You're going to get hard and go straight into Mr. Tolliver. I know what I said. <laughs> Rollo swaggered past the chair without even looking at him. Mr. Tolliver remained. Rollo spun around. He'd clearly expect. Beck and Luca gave each other and Rollo slammed his. He grabbed the table. Mr. Tolliver groaned. He recoiled. The chair wobbled as he. Mr. Tolliver with a gruff tone. <laughs> The doubtful Rollo hitting his stride. He slammed the table. Mr. Tall, he was near. Mr. Tolliver was in a day. He shook his head, feeling his voice faded. To uh, uh, uh. With that, Mr. Tall Rollo swung around with it. I mean, he only got tackled by a 12 year old boy, but apparently that and a bit of tough questioning was enough to knock Mr. Tolliver out, so he's not that hard, is he? So now we go ahead and speak to Do You Have a Car, though? Chapter 
Chapter 8 Six feet under, three towns over. The kids spent the rest of Luca tried to sh explosive. Gran was the only family he had, but the old map was as the sun began to set. Rollo shut his book with. Rollo muttered under his. Beck slammed her finger down. Something tickled the back. The question hung in the Beck rubbed her. Okay, so the mystery has just thickened. The, the plot, the plot has thickened like a double cream, like a Bailey's and milk. It's all thickening. Like a big pie full of cream, it's all thickening now. So we are heading in. We're gonna be all like, Granny, who apparently is not my granny. Which of course, now we're wondering like, what the goddamn hell is that? So we need to go and check on Mr. Tolliver, see if he's still hard or if he's hardened less. So obviously head into the kitchen, head to the right to see, nyah, nyah, nyah. He's not there. Holy moly's. Crud snatch. Mr. Tolliver was no. Or maybe. Lucas hungry, snot realizing it. He. Luca rushed over to the pile of jam jar. He flipped the lid to read. So after you've eaten the quite questionable jam, which smells like pure death and sulfuric acid, uh, we're gonna just gonna start heading upstairs until we no longer can. So Gran's gone. She's like, bro, did you just eat my sulfuric acid jam? Yeah, well, you screwed. And this is just basically a scene now where our legs don't work like they used to before. I can't believe I'm singing Ed Sheeran. What the hell is wrong with me? Something was Luca groaned, his limbs might through numb lips. He... Chapter a speech to Luca awoke to find he moaned and or rather shaking the questions from his woozy. Head. Appreciate you not uh, taking advantage of me there, Granny, who is obviously is not my granny. We're not in that uh, part of the world, so that's all good. Uh, I'm just joking. Sorry, so what we're gonna do then, we're gonna head outside. Ah, beautiful day. Head down. Apparently, the sulfuric acid jam didn't affect us too much, thankfully. And then we're going to speak to Roly, Rocco, Becky, and I keep forgetting. Ah, it's just Rolo Head, isn't it? So we do have the slide charm that will come in handy for us. And as we go right, this is basically another big scene. The festival begins. The dog mayor is just generally Boris Johnson in dog form. He's like, you're all screwed. Gus cleared his throat and William Kerr bounded on the... He gave Gus a hearty slap on the... Mr. Kerr pulled a big step. Mr. Kerr took a moment to survey the crowd. He wiped away. He thumped the Pope. Mr. Kerr nodded. The crowd was silent. Mr. Kerr methodically made 
his voice began to build. The crowd began to look around. Mr. Kerr, quickly. He raised his hand. Become the climate changes. Here we go. Yeah! And Greta Thunberg right now is furious if she's playing this game. Furious she is. I told you! For a man like Will on a stage. The end. There's that ice again! Whenever maybe we should just So since this is another end, um, we are going to have to go down another path. So we're gonna choose a beginner's guide to hostile interrogation, which should be the very top left one, should already be on it. This time though, we're going to choose the sly options. We've got three to choose from. We're gonna now choose the sly option. So a beginner's guide to hostile erection interrogation. Sorry, autocorrect in real life. It's a, it's a real thing. It's a real disease, you know. And it's basically going to end up with um, Beck. And normally, this is a case of when a man fails at his job two or three times, woman takes over, woman gets it first time. It's just this eerie superpower that all you women have. It's, it's genuinely incredible. His relation to Grand. This was going to be easy. Mr. Tolliver wriggled a bit. Beck quickly removed the rope. Mr. Tolliver rubbed the... Beck twirled her hand as... Beck shook her head and clicked her tongue. Mr. Tolliver let out an amused... Beck was on a roll now. Heading for the stairs, Mr. Tolliver She grinned and gave him with a shrug. He continued Beck blinked. She turned to the table. Beck marked. Luca and Beck looked at Rolo with a. Right, so we're going to investigate Nut Greed's drugstore. So we're going to head down, of course. We're going to head to the right again, ignoring Mrs. Uh, Fratelli, the Fratellis. Go to the right for yet another scene. Gus looked around nervous. Harris's cry hung. So, I uh, appreciate you not questioning us why we're all out late snooping on everyone. That's good. So, we go into the bottom right. Of course, you know where Mr. Nut Greed's uh, drugstore is. Again, you tell, a, you tell a British person that it's a drugstore, and specific people in Britain, the ones who specifically use drugs, will think of something completely different. Uh, anyway, we are talking to Solomon, old salmonella, old poison head. Poison fish face. <laughs> and well, don't give up hope just yet, younglings. What we're going to do now, we're going to go to the, uh, the phone box right here. Ooh, ooh, ooh. 
Beck cupped her hands on the glass to peek at <laughs> Beck flung open the door and they... <laughs> Luca cracked his knuckle. The inside of the phone booth dropped loose without even the space to panic. Suddenly, the kid. It was unclear where they. The air was stagnant and smelled vaguely. Having that as a password is like having password123 as your password on your computer. So interact with this bit of junk or whatever it is right here, or this suit. And then after this, all we've got to do then is interact with all three of the holes. You'll get a bit of dialogue, so interact dialogue, interact with the next one dialogue, interact with the third one dialogue. And then after that, you're going to then interact with the computer and we're going to finally see who's going to start popping his rear end down here. Rolo's hands. Joseph waited for a moment. He gestured toward the string. Nuncreed let out a gl He shook his head. Nuncree took a met. Luca began to. The color drained from. Nun Nuncree grabbed Luca by the. A jolt of realizations. points of reference she heard the tinny once she stopped fire then a burst of Welly, 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 it's, it's starting to hit the fan big time now, eh? So we're going to head down, and obviously we're going to the right this time. 
little bit more cutscene and dialogue is going to happen again. <laughs> And then after this bit, go to the right to get ready for the big reveal about who Gran really is. I will give you 58 pennies slash cents if you can already guess who it is before she uh, reveals herself. It's a torch. spun back toward Grand. <laughs> Mr. Nuncreed, his voice hard. They both now yelled, making their peace. The wind howled. <laughs> they menaced at each other, both catching their breath. The moment balanced on a knife's edge. Amid a blur of a and after the big, big slimy match, we are going to get two options here, and we're going to choose hum. So hum the option. And in the stillness, after the death of his father, each night, his it was the only, th the only thing that that melody perv shivering in the raw. Recognition slowly those countless nights, the incomparable loss they sh she let the torch fall to the A few steps toward Luca was all she could bear before dropping to the snow herself. Through a flood of tears, she began to hum. Joseph stared into the snow as it... <laughs> Chapter 9. The Devil You Know. Seven months. Eleanor Van Horn crept down the main. She stopped in no turn. So we're going straight into chapter nine, and honestly, how can one town be so stupid? It's literally Eleanor, but she dressed up as she dressed up as an old lady, and nobody managed to get it. That's uh, well, <laughs> the blinkers are on apparently. Anyway, once again, there is not a lot to do here; just a, a little bit more dialogue with, oh, hello, it's me, and with the mayor, and well, this is where the big reveal and the shocking stuff's going to start happening again. Mr. Kerr addressed the uh, 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 u
Whispers filtered through. Uh, 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 uh. Torment dragged on Joe. He paused for a moment. Gave a bow. Gasps rippled through the. Solomon pulled a glass vial from. In one smooth motion. A triumphant smile. His body and face began to contort. A hushed. This is a story. <laughs> Sharper examined his new... Sharper choked out frustrated grump. William Kerr gave a subtle... quiet. Sharper addressed he'd planned this moment for so long that now. <laughs> Mr. Kerr flourished a proposal. Well, all I can say to that is God damn. So, Sharper Valentine is back from the dead, or he was Solomon, or whatever went on there. But anyway, that's a pretty, um, that's a pretty big twist. Kerr is not actually Kerr. His name is Patrick C. Vonderbonga Donga, whatever his name was, and it's put this whole thing into a big ball of perspectively nothing. So, what we need to do then from here, we are going to now choose hazard, hazardous hectoring. So, just one to the right there, so Hazardous Hectoring is the next one that we're going to choose. And then, the, for the next charm, we're going to choose Tickle. So make sure to choose Tickle. Of course, we've done Strange earlier on, so it's Tickle. Test out the tickles. Beck lunged forward. <laughs> Tears began to form in tissue. Beck redoubled her efforts. Iggy's eyes dark. Iggy kicked at the puddle before. Beck shook the ooze out of her hair. Chapter. 
capture f the best policy. Luca paused for he'd only just met Beck. Hopefully he could make it up to her. <laughs> Roxy and it was clear they'd spent all <laughs> Roxy's temper could often be dismissed as the impatience, but this was the most in her eyes were wide. In a torrent of rambled war. Roxy, still exhausted and with a determined sigh. Roxy drew her. Roxy tried to think of the. Luca wiped his cheeks and gave. <laughs> Looking into the puddle, Roxy rub. Mad how Iggy got pushed in and become a big tooth, big swellhead or something. And then uh, Becky, as we head down, and then of course head down again, Becky only got a, a, her hair dyed. And it looks, yeah, it looked quite tidy, that one. So, um. <laughs> We are going to speak to Mr. Nutgreed again, the weird douche. Mr. Nutgreed gently placed one. Luke appeared up at Mr. Nutgreed. There was. And for the next choice that we're going to make, then we would have already had it automatically. It is Malice. So we had that automatically there where Sharp of Valentine was talking to the festival. So make sure to choose Malice. Oh no, my head is full of Malice. Luca felt the weight of none creep. Something wasn't right. He didn't know why. Luca twisted free. Grip my shoulder like that again, boy. And the police will be throwing your ass in jail. I will tell them things they... You don't really want to know. So anyway, heading back up into the main sort of square area, the main fountain area, head up past these two dudes and to the top left. So we go back to the festival part now. And where we're actually going and what we're going to be doing now is finally getting the Agile Angler achievement. Now, as long as you've got all eight, um, you could have done this at any time. So we'll just get it out of the way before we head through to the main stretch. So press the A button here on the chair. And it's a very simple, you know, very simple mini game. Doesn't even matter if you end up breaking it. So what you need to do, it's going to go into like this black and white scene-ish. So have a look at the um, bait sort of box in the uh, right hand corner right there. So you need to just catch a fish or catch something with all eight. So as long as you've got all eight, that means the Agile Angler achievement will unlock at the end of this. So go towards the river here, press the A button. It'll latch on, then you just press, you hold the A button, and when it starts shaking and the, the line starts going red, let go. And then press and hold the A button again. When it starts shaking and, and goes red, let go. And that is literally all you have to do for this mini fishing game then. So you're just going to get all eight items out. And again, we'll just do the same here. So go back into it. We've done tickle, so go over to the next one, which will be junk. Go back, press the A button. It'll take a second or two to latch on. You'll see it sort of light up a little bit more. And then you just press and hold the A button again until the line starts shaking. Let go. And then just keep going until you've done it for all eight. Again, if it for some reason you, you do seem to be missing one somehow, uh, just have a look in the timestamps below and uh, have a look at the, that part of the video and you'll know exactly sort of where to go and what to do. But hopefully at this point you would have got all eight and jobs are good. And so just... Yeah, uh, crack on for another couple of minutes there until you get this done. Luca stuck a tools things always. Look 
Martha wrapped some tape. Hey, you never. Luca place to sink sometimes the Luca wrapped a twig of some fish. Luca tied a bent nail. If all you have. And here we have it then. So as soon as you get the last object, the Agile Angler achievement will unlock. Now what you, you should now be on eight out of 10 achievements. If you want to do a quick achievement check, you should now be on eight out of 10. And the uh, final two are story related. So let's head up to the tree house now when we get out of here, go in towards the tree house, and then well, something incredible is gonna happen here too. He aired a long... <laughs> Luca felt his eye. He can see. Once again, Luca found this time he took a sink. The world flickered. He found himself the source. He plopped down soon enough. Luca stood up. He plucked the a keepsake. The voice of his You made me proud. Luca turned to face Dad. A warm grin. A place where everything that Luca found him wait. Another voice spoke out. That's without knowing why. Yes. Luca's father, of course. I'm as real. Luca turned to look at. And you, the doppelganger. Mm -hmm. I'm as real as the part of you. This, that makes through his tears. <laughs> his father pulled him in for an ember. Time to go, Buckaroo. Luca was startled from his dream. A commanding voice. Just as Luca spread. <laughs> Chapter five. Dangers big. Luca stumbled back. He hurt, keeping his eyes fixed as his hand grabbed a large figure. <laughs> the large figure cock. <laughs> Luca's jaw. He peered more closely at something about him only bigger. Chain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Rollo proudly presented his. Mm -hmm. Luca moved to the side and pointed Rollo. Mm -hmm. His hands shot up to it. <laughs> Rollo shadow box. With a yelp, Rollo dove behind Luca. 
Bruh! Rolo's huge! He looks kind of good as an adult, to be fair. And in fact, he's like most adults these days, isn't he? He's uh, got, got the body size of an adult, but the uh, maturity and brain size of a 12-year-old. So, yeah. Or, or, or maybe that's actually just me, the maturity of a 12-year-old. <laughs> Sounds about right, actually. She sighed, and after she flashed a slide. Gave Rollo a quick elbow to the ring. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Back flicked a. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Rollo started away. Chapter 6 The heist. They spent the night's end. It would be no small, not to mention, the, by the time this, this could. The final day before the fest. They'd need to pull, even enlist, luckily. Luca, Beck, and Rollo. They hadn't slept the festival. Waved vaguely at Rollo's. Oh. Beck snorted an involuntary. G <sighs> they each look. Yeah, so it's very, very dialogue as we <laughs> head towards the final straight of the game. All right, so let's head down out of here and to the left, and we're going back over the bridge to the right. Over to the right hand screen. So Jeff is the sort of crazy homeless looking dude. So what we need to do is go bottom right. And then Jeff will basically be right there. And all we gotta do is choose one option. There he is. So go ahead, speak to big Geoff. My name Jeff. <laughs> Jeff wheezed out a long snicker. The joy in Jeff's... So we do have another decision to make here, and we make uh, have to make sure to choose the hide option. 
So make sure to choose the hide option, which would be the first one. And that somehow seems to change his mind and it works well. One good Luca offered out his over the firm and dust. So that's the good stuff. That's Jeff done. Right, uh, head past the telephone box there on the right and sort of head up. And then what we're going to see is Big Ig, Big Ig, Big Iggy, and Trish. So go ahead and speak to those two. Now, there are three that we need to choose, specifically three. If you end up accidentally um, choosing the wrong one, you can press the Y button and just come back here. But choose the Schnitt option, the Scheisenhausen option first. And then second up, we are going to choose the Strange option. Should be the first one there, so Strange. In your neighborhood, in the inside out, Ghostbusters. And then finally, we are going to choose break. So it'll be on the right hand side, there it is, break. A wild Iggy glanced over with a quick nod, Luca was off. Iggy gazed up at Tish with a smile. A single tear ran. Chapter 7 Into the high. A good high and thorough preparation. So far, Jeff, Beck radioed, and Rolo, he stowed away in mission. Rolo, being uniquely suited for the outfit. Rolo took a few vigorous. Mm -hmm. to think quick. Mm. Rollo sighed. Mm. With a stroke of his muff. Mm. He stammered and flipped. Mm. Rollo interrupted. Mm. The distraction was enough. The clipboard fumbled around. I mean, again, they're not amazing, are they? You know, it's quite clearly just a big Rolo with a mustache. He could have literally just gone, Err, I'm Uncle Rolo. I'm... What's bigger than a Rolo? I'm Uncle Munchie. The chocolate munchies, you know? Anyway, when those two nip off to the left door, we're going to go sort of to the right and then head through the right again. And we're going to go to the right again. And we're going to go sort of down, sort of down right, whatever it is. And this is where we're going to see Poison Salamander head. A veneer of confusion. His words were... Solomon's facade. Luca happened to notice... Luca tried the handle. Solomon leaned forward to it. Luca smiled and looked. She mimed a quick hat. Light on the keypad chain. Luca switched on him. Uh, uh, uh. 
On the computer screen, a Luca pecked out his best g The screen blinked to life. Solomon's jaw clenched. Luca quickly scanned the call. Once again, Lucas, in that moment of distraction, Solomon reached. He quickly skimmed the screen. Mr. Kerr approached with with self satisfaction. He Nellie leaned over to That's another long bit of dialogue there. Um, but anyway, as soon as we speak to Solomon Dorino, we're going to eventually be able to interact with the computer. So go ahead and interact with the computer for a lot more longer dialogue. Solomon muttered in and actually all we're going to do now, we're going to interact with the drinks. We're basically just going around the room insulting the crap out of Solomon right there. Because of course we don't know that he is sharper. And he is getting angry. So after that, we're going to interact with the desk. Luca held his hand. And finally, we're going to actually speak to Salamander Head himself. With a subtle quiver. And finally, 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 2.0. Go over to the left-hand side, chest of drawers or the, the filing cabinets or whatever. Interact with one of those, and that was actually the final, final thing. They heard the trampling of frantic footsteps. Her eyes searched the Solomon watched eagerly. With a sickened look, she peered in. Solomon clapped with. Uh, uh, uh. 
Solomon glanced down. Kerr presented it with... Before he could finish... Rollo casually tossed the vial to Luca. Luca jiggled the vial mocking. She held it tightly behind her... Solomon sighed. He pursed his lips with feigned A deep uncertainty walked. She looked to Nell with a dispirited nod. Nell Beck slowly approached Sol With apprehension. Solomon pocketed the vial and brushed off. The blood drained from... Solomon shook his head with gratification. A muffled applause resonated. So after this scene then, all we're going to do then is simply speak to Rolo first, then Beck, and then Nelly after. So we'll speak to Rolo first, then Beck second, and then Nelly thirdly. <laughs> Luca was a sudden explosion. Chapter eight. Come up in ears still ringing. Gran picked through the dust and smoke. She she'd had to beg. How many nights had she spent fish and now? Traded for this jagged hole with Fratelli and Tolliver at her side. It was a strange feeling. The last time she'd stalked, they quickly rounded a something worth guard. She leapt forward. If her last chance. from deep with Solomon pulled a glass in one smooth motion he downed its contents a triumphant smile right now we need to choose an important option here for another achievement we've got a choice of three and what we need to choose is malice so we need to choose malice make sure to choose malice and that will give us the pop goes the weasel achievement uh, you'll need to choose change when we come back to this one in order to finish the game. But in order to get this achievement, make sure to choose Malois. His body and f bah! It's a party, everyone! So we should only have one achievement left now for finishing the game and we're going to be getting that within the next nine minutes. So choose the vile vial, which you should already be on there, but it is in the sort of top middle one. So the vile vial, that's what we're choosing. And this time we're going to choose change. So make sure to choose change. And it's pretty much now the end of the game. I think this is the last thing that we're going to do. Hooray. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
head. His body and face began to contort. <laughs> Eris awkwardly cradled, but she looked to her brother, her voice. <laughs> She looked back down at the infant with equal parts. With a shake of her head, Eris said, <laughs> Epilogue. Beacon Pine's coldest summer on record came and went without much fanfare. Folks shared what they had at the new school after ever the chill of what they kindled when spring arrived. And as the dawn of the first day of summer came again, it crept his mind at peace knowing he is here for a reason. Okay, last thing that we're going to do in the main game, but now we are into the epilogue. Now, there's not a lot uh, left to do here. We're just going to head outside. All we're going to be doing is checking in with people and speaking to them. So, of course, we go back down. We go to the right, ignoring um, that uh, big head right there, heading up, and heading up again, and then straight into the treehouse to interact with Rolo, and look, everyone's made friends, ah, that's nice. Right, now we're leaving someone who wanted to beat the crap out of us constantly before, alone, with our mission control. So we're just going to head back down into this main festival area, go to the right, so we are of course back in the main square. We are now going to go ahead and just check on Beck, make sure Beck is Trek, Weck, bottom right again. I don't know what I was trying to rhyme at by the way. Uh, ignore Mr. Nutgreed, screw that guy. And then just go past all these. Again, you can speak to them if you want, but there's really no need. So head to the right here, and then go ahead and speak to Beck before heading to the right to a house again. And now we've only got one more thing left to do. So we're going to take Jeff's wild ride to prison, baby. Jeff was the one that took a dump on my head. That's not allowed in this part of the world. So heading left and then heading down. Then we can just interact with Jeff here right by the phone box. Let's take his wild ride out of here. <laughs> I, but then you, I, I don't know exactly, it's hard to explain, it's funny, now that our time together, let's just,
And there it is then, guys and gals. As soon as this bit ends, the book's closed. The close the book achievement will unlock. That's a very original achievement name there for closing the book. And that will be Beacon Pines. Now, I thought this was an absolutely awesome game. Lots of dialogue, of course. It depends on what you, know, what you want, uh, what you prefer in a game. But I thought it was very good anyway. But that should be that. Close the book. 10 out of 10 achievements unlocked. And there we go. So we'll just double check that. In a moment. There it is. 10 out of 10. Lovely stuff. So again, thank you so much for watching, guys and gals. I hope you enjoyed the game. I thought it was excellent. Well worth it on Game Pass as well. I uh, hope you enjoyed the guide as well and that it helped. Of course, if it did help, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and share with a friend as well. A big shout out to everyone who continues, again, seriously, to support the channel on Patreon. Just legends, all of you. And with that one then, guys and gals, I guess I'll see you in the next Game Pass game. Ba ba ba. Big love.